It was mysteriously magnificent. A domed wooden ceiling painted with intricate Renaissance-style scenes that forked into multiple rounded hallways. Artwork lined the walls of various styles and content, everything from sweeping landscapes to picturesque pastorals to the bright, bold colors of the abstract. I struggled to take it all in while the curator crossed the stone floors briskly. Right then, I believe we shall start over here, he started, motioning to the tunnel on the far right before it was interrupted. Um, sir? The meek voice came from a very nervous-looking woman behind the desk in the center of the room. She appeared to be in her thirties, with wildly curly hair stuffed into a cap that read security in large black letters. She had several oversized computer monitors in front of her, but she was looking to the curator with worried eyes. The curator was annoyed. Not now, Kimberly. She shifted behind the desk. But sir, she tried again, but was cut off. Kimberly, we have guest. The man hissed through his teeth. The guard looked at him, confused. Then her eyes traveled behind him to see me. She studied my face with an odd, bewildered way, until suddenly her expression shifted to one of excitement. Mr. Singer, she exclaimed, and I wondered if everyone here mysteriously knew my name. We're all very glad you're here. Welcome to the Habitsville Heart Museum. I nodded politely, and she turned back to the curator. Hi, I'm sorry, sir, but I really do need a quick word with you. The curator sighed, mustache wiggling with agitation. Fine, but make it quick. He turned to me. My apologies, Mr. Singer. Have a look around the lobby. I'll be back in a moment. Take your time. I said. Politeness seems to be something I fall back on when completely and utterly confused. The two sequestered themselves behind the security desk as I began to stroll around the circular room. I was looking around the lobby. Sure, there was plenty to see in just half this room alone. I couldn't imagine what awaited me in each of the museum's hallways, but I was also, of course, doing my best to eavesdrop on the conversation going on in the center of the room. At first listen, it seemed to revolve around the whereabouts of the missing security guard named Humphrey. You patrolled in respiratory this morning, which was what was on the schedule, Kimberly was whispering nervously as she typed something into the computer. Yes, right? The curator hissed impatiently, and then? Well, he was supposed to go to lunch. He said he was going to lunch, so I said I would cover all factory. He... He said he was going to lunch, she repeated. And, the curator demanded, Kimberly, please stop wasting my time. Humphrey went to muscular instead. The room grew deathly quiet. I was standing in front of a painting of a family having a picnic in a meadow, trying my best to seem like staring at art rendered me deaf. Though it seemed like this new information was enough to make the two museum staff forget they had a guest. Muscular. The curator repeated, his voice strangled and hoarse. Yes, sir, Kimberly answered morose. Then she clicked something on the computer. It was silent as the two watched whatever it was on the screen, but it only lasted about twenty seconds, and when it was over, the ringing silence seemed to intensify. Then the curator spoke. Right then. On with the tour. The curator strolled away from the guard behind the desk, whose fear looked not the slightest bit assuaged. He came back to me, smiling, and motioned towards the far wall. Carved into the surface was a darkened archway, the entrance to a tunnel. Above it was a plaque labeled, Coronary. It's always best to start with the heart of the Habitsville Heart Museum. <laughs> Perhaps this will tell you more about why you're here. Then. The curator stood before the tunnel and crossed into the darkness without hesitation. Like a willingly swallowed sardine into a whale's open mouth. I often wonder, dear readers, if you think me brave. If, if you've read my stories, read and believed them, then you're used to hearing me justify just why I get myself into the predicaments I do. With all the mysterious creatures, places, and most horribly people that make up this town, you may think me courageous to the point of stupidity, daring to the point of arrogance. But if I was to tell you the truth, 
I would say that I am a supremely anxious mind, trapped inside an absurdly trusting body. So as I stood in front of this great maw of a hallway, listening to the footsteps of the curator get farther and farther away, my mind pleaded with my body, begging to turn around and leave, and yet my foot moved forward into the shadow, and soon... Soon I, too, was inside the whale. I followed the curator into the coronary tunnel, two cells in a vein, and felt myself overcome with the strangest sensation in my chest. My heart was beating harder, not faster. I was afraid my pulse should have been racing, but instead it held its same steady beat and seemed to compensate by pushing large gulps of blood through my arteries like a little combustion engine in my chest. What is that? I asked, unabashedly putting my hand to my torso, horrified to find that I could feel it as well, the outline of the organ inflating and deflating at an alarming capacity. Nothing to worry about. The curator's voice drifted through the dark calmly. Completely ordinary, he continued, though the sensation felt anything but. You're in sync with the museum, which doesn't have much leniency for guests. Stay calm. You'll be fine. My chest actually hurt with the force of the blood being pushed through my veins, my heart compensating for the museum's slow pulse. And though the panic was sitting as a pit in my throat, forced myself to take deep breaths. Slowly, the pulse returned to normal, and the straining in my chest settled to a dull ache. So bravery was a necessity to survive a trip to the Heart Museum. Not even bravery, a complete and utter apathy to give way to the will of the museum. Though my sight was limited in the dark, my sense of smell wasn't. The odor was growing stronger as we walked, a rotten, dank smell mixed with some chemical. The scent of preservation. Eventually, my nose was burning with the acrid scent, when suddenly the curator's footsteps stopped in front of me, and I too ceased moving through the black. Then, two sharp claps cut through the quiet, making my body and my heart jump painfully, and suddenly, the lights flashed on. I blinked as my pupils adjusted to the jolt of brightness. What surrounded me was a library of faces. Painted portraits on outstretched canvas covered the surrounding walls, set upon easels under spotlights, and some even were placed flat on the tall ceiling above, eyes staring from every possible direction. They were all sorts of people from all kinds of demographics, and their facial expressions were some of the oddest I'd ever seen. They were like stills from a video complex contortions of faces captured in oil. Not the usual vacant expressions or soft smiles of other portraits I'd seen. An old woman looked tired, a young boy seemed bored. One woman appeared to be mid-sneeze and another mid-laugh. The hair, makeup, and visible clothing of each person varied in style and time period. I saw boxy glasses from the 40s long hair from the 70s, and a teenager with headphones on. Though the subjects were odd, even I could tell these paintings were expertly done. If all done by a single artist, to fill the room would have surely taken a lifetime. Beautiful, isn't it? I'd nearly forgotten I wasn't alone. The curator stood in the center of the room, gazing at the portraits. I've seen them a thousand times, yet every encounter they take my breath away. He smiled at me, and for a moment I actually half returned to the expression, so genuine he seemed. I like to start guests off here, let them know how welcome they really are. The statement almost seemed sweet, until I really thought about it. The beauty is welcoming, you mean? I asked hesitantly. Well, yes, the curator said, but it's not what I was referring to. <laughs> I didn't respond, and he turned to me, eyebrows raised as though I had done something he hadn't expected. You surprise me, Mr. Singer. I mean, surely you recognize them? Habitsville isn't that large of a town. 
I examined the portraits more closely, trying to understand what the curator expected me to see, and then... I felt it. Familiarity, but it... It wasn't until I saw a portrait of my third grade teacher, Mrs. Devereaux, that I realized what all the portraits had in common. They all depicted the contorted faces of citizens. It might have been charming if the one portrait I'd recognized hadn't been Mrs. Devereaux. We're shielded from so much as children if we're lucky. That's a kind way of putting it. Often I wondered if it was this editing of everyday events that led me down the path of investigative journalism. I can't stand for a secret to be kept. Mrs. Devereaux was one of those secrets. She had been a kind woman in her late sixties, too passionate about teaching to retire, though perhaps that was a sugar coating too. Though memories were blurry from that age, there was no forgetting the large wire-framed squares she wore for glasses, the lenses so thick they were warped. Her eyes were made comically large, and I always thought she resembled a housefly. I could never swat them after she was gone. A series of stand-in teachers came after Miss Devereaux abruptly stopped coming to class, each telling us a different reason why the woman had disappeared. A long vacation, a bad cold, a visiting relative. Eventually, with the self-centeredness of children, we stopped asking for explanations. Now her portrait stared back at me, lips hardened into a grim line, her eyes Sad, almost pitying. What is this? I asked, barely letting the question come from my throat. The curator spoke gently. This is how we choose our guests. I tore my eyes away from Mrs. Devereaux's and turned back towards my guide. His eyes mirrored hers, pitying and patient. A teacher talking to a child. I was acutely aware of the pain in my chest as my pulse strained to quicken, held back by the mysterious thrall of the museum. I was always a good student. It took only a moment more for me to understand what he was saying. I walked around the room, eyes darting frantically from frame to frame, the movement making my blood gush loudly, painfully in my ears until, of course, I found it. An ornate gold frame, orange undertone oil, so smooth it still looked wet. A young man was pictured holding a white coffee mug with a pine tree on it to his lips. Gaze cast down as though reading a newspaper or perhaps perhaps proofreading an article. I leaned in even closer, maybe I was mistaken, but I saw the chip in the pottery rim that always threatened to cut my lip, the tiny scar on his brow from a hard childhood fall. It was a painting of me. Mr. Singer. He clearly crooned my name, so sweetly was he calling me. I tore my eyes away from my image on canvas and looked at the curator. How? He sighed and closed the gap between us, resting a hand on my shoulder as we both examined the painting. There's an element of mystery to all art, I suppose, though the museum's work holds more questions than most. I've long since given up wondering how it does what it does. More pertinent now is a different question. Why? Fall is finally here, and it's finally cooling down, which means it's time for you guys to get yourself a hot cup of tea. My wife happens to sell tea. Etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea sells different teas that are inspired by nerdy based things, as well as a bunch of new teas that are available for the Halloween season. 
My personal favorite, the one that I drink whenever I'm recording, is Dark and Stormy Night. It has a little Mr. Creepypasta symbol on it, and if you ask, you can get a little Mr. Creepypasta dabbing sticker. Also, anytime that you order one of those, you actually get my autograph on a little card, so if you want that, hey, you can get that. And finally, I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. So I want to give a very special thank you to Jordan Humble, Diana Krause, Disciple, Strategy Wolf Emoji, Sully Man, Brandon Mendoza, Brimstone Pandemonium, Kaltuna, William Wellington, Scruffy the Janitor, Brenna Crow, Lakeda Canizales, Smiley the Psychotic, Jenna, Dante Kincaid, Simba's Bloody Mojo, Mephistopheles, Curse Pox Primarch, M, Jesus Corneo, Yargul, Verbal Horror, Amber Clark, Jay Kearns, Mike, Himbo Jerry, Crusader Chocobo, Corbin Dallas, Estebean, Seclude, Salty Surprise, Red Shadow Cat, Turtle Man, Cryolinian, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Dirt Diver 030, Voice of Sand, Psychomel, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, William King, Sashi Sasaku, Croconut 509, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Hades Nephew, Acid System, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. I really appreciate your support, and I cannot thank you enough. I wish you all the best. Sweet dreams.